Hello, good afternoon, namaste, welcome to another of our weekly events at Static Field. Today we are having another really special guest, Mr. Shamik Guha, who is the co-founder and CEO of Altor, which is the world's first software-enabled helmet module to make bike rides easier, safer and more efficient. It is specifically targeted towards increasing the fleet efficiency of two-wheeler driven economies in the delivery, logistics and bike sharing sectors. He was featured on Shark Tank Season 1. We welcome you, sir. Thank you so much, Rashmi. Thanks a lot. Yeah, hello. Yeah, um, yes, sir. So, so how did you come up with the idea of Altor? Sure, sure. Yeah, so before we start there, I would like to thank each and everyone who is there and was, you know, taking the time out on a Sunday afternoon. Really, really thankful for this. So, uh, yeah, so to answer your question, Rashmi, how Altor started it essentially was uh, like, I think we shared the story in Shark Tank as well to some degree that a bike accidents or you know like uh, facing accidents and thereby resulting uh, deaths or whatever like impacts after that are something which is very common like I'm sure all of us have had some family member you know someone uh, uh, who has faced something like this so for us it, it turned out to be really unfortunately for one of our close friends where we actually got to realize how severe you know this this sort of a thing is and of course now we can uh, like speak speak a lot easier about it like for us i'm saying because it's been a while but back then it was really something that you know uh, shook us in the sense that you know that something needs to be done there for sure and we need to we wanted to figure out so we like it's it's important to uh, like uh, i think put it out that we never had any specific plan that you know this is exactly what you know we want to do whatever like, i mean this is the feature that will solve it the idea always to start Alta was to solve or to at least tackle or work on this problem of, you know, reducing accidents. So, like, when did you start it then? Uh, when did you start Altor? We started it in our college days back in, I think, in you know, 2016, 2017. So, uh, of course, this thing was one on one side, which was the cause, right? The major thought chain. And on the other side, I had back then... Uh, completed a, a six month internship at IIT Bombay. So, uh, there, because you know, we being from a tier two engineering college, uh, we never got that exposure of you know what a, a premium engineering institution is like, what all happens there, what's the life like, and in those colleges. So, I got to experience that for a good six months and with my project in there. And that really turned out to be a game changer because there, I for the first time got to learn what an entrepreneurship cell is how how things you know work out usually in, in colleges and from idea stage then you're working making a prototype getting it to production and then of course uh, you know increasing the reach of that so that really helped me frame the initial ideas and that's when when i went back to kolkata in my college i managed to you know get some great people who are also believing in the cause uh, friends who are also you know so with supplementary skill sets or and that definitely is something that helped us start so yeah it started in around 2017 as an idea for sure okay so that was really inspiring that in spite of being in spite of not being from a tier one college you have such a successful startup so like one genuine question during the lockdown period when the whole country came to a standstill like how did you carry out your business that needs mass support unfortunately during that time there were only ambulances running and like at least during the main lockdown phase there were no bikes no scooties so like at that time how did you carry this forward i think it's a very important question right so uh, for I mean, for all of us, I mean, I'm sure for most of us, because none of us, you know, uh, are from the 19, 19, 10, 19, 11 phase where we saw the Spanish flu. So for all of us, the pandemic was a very new you know, sort of an experience where we, we, we didn't know, to be very honest, we didn't know what to expect, how the world would turn out, right? Whether we can at all go out or not. These were definitely some of the questions. I mean, we got really lucky that we had completed a fundraise just before that. So we had enough cash in the bank for us to sustain. 
now having said that it's very easy and i often see people describing the pandemic in the way how they you know uh, turned it to their advantage and how it was a brilliantly productive uh, year year and a half whatever so that's the usual narrative but i would like to tell you from our side being very realistic we were absolutely clueless and at the start of the pandemic because then we were just bringing trying to bring the product out we had uh, like after a long uh sort of a spell we had finally managed to get on to sort of a deal stage with the with a very big company uh and then just when the deal was about to get signed the the lockdown happened and everything got to a to a standstill so that was a very challenging phase we we uh, again with the context that we didn't know what to do we tried to get back to the basics as to number one how we will survive this phase at least if we take a one year phase that was the first major challenge that how would we survive number one number two of course we we got some time to and we really did well in cutting the costs in making sure that you know the it's very lean so that uh, even if things go here and there a few months we would not have a problem plus at the same time we tried to really focus on uh, sort of the you know the, the 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 digital aspect of things be it the social media or whatever in in sense that you know we wanted to at least try out a few things that we wouldn't have gotten the the time to try out probably otherwise right we would have been in a flow and going on so we 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 spent some time there and i think one of the major things that that also came out is this whole idea of you know how we can ex- expand the product line to a good degree how we can reach out to more consumers we got time to go back to the drawing board and think of these things so it's one of through one of these uh, conversations only that the module idea came up and you know we 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 started working on that which is of course taken shape now but yeah this is this was the pandemic as a nutshell the biggest challenge was that because we were a hardware startup like for a software only company it's it's comparatively simpler i mean i don't want to demean anything by saying that it's very simple for software companies no it's not but at least they get the chance to do remote working you know with with uh, stuff but for us getting access to the lab continuing the r&d was really crucial so we somehow managed to you know maneuver our way in and just continue that while focusing on these things so having said that would you draw your attention to the would you draw our attention to the unique features that your product includes like that could attract customers sure absolutely so uh, what we are really trying to do i think uh, uh, is based on two fronts number one as i said the core still remains the same that everything alter brings out is somehow related to how we can reduce accidents on the road that is absolutely the thought channel for individual bikers like uh, we have really seen and we understood by speaking with them that for them communicating on the go is a major hassle right they constantly have to take the phone out of their pocket i'm sure we all have seen someone just fitting the phone like this and you know start trying to write which is all all very comical but that's exactly how the system is running right now so we can we can tell that it's broken yeah bluetooth headphones are not the solution because once you you know start wearing them and uh, you know you are entirely cut out from the world so even the riders don't prefer that much and at the same time uh, yeah. you know you, yeah you want to have something which is convenient which will not let you shift your eyesight from the road ahead of you and at the same time in case of any any mishap or any accident something that will detect it and let your you know loved ones or your emergency contacts know about it so that is the primary you know solution set that we have for the for the uh, the generic bike users and for the fleets what we have is you know for the fleets it becomes a little tricky in the sense that the riders who are actually riding it are in a massive amount of pressure currently so we all are aware how how much bashing is going on all across the country for this quick delivery you know safety of riders and all of those points and we we really feel that that's where altor comes in you know at a very sweet spot that we we sort of give the companies the fleets uh that mechanism which which they were missing in order to bring in safety so how do we do that we of course do the things we i mentioned that hands free communication accident detection and stuff one thing extra that we do for the fleets is we also analyze the behavior the riding behavior of the drivers so the goal is very simple to change the behavior because fundamentally in a country we 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 talk of safety as a very third tier problem right because uh, uh it's a poor country like there are many other problems that people have to first deal with and then deal with safety that's how it is i mean we cannot deny that and it's the same for all the developing markets so we are trying to penetrate those layers and get in and 
sort of understand you know that what sort of a behavior that person exhibits because as it said that something that happens uh, now usually has uh, whatever a, a year at the back of it you know that is building it up and, and letting you know, uh, at this point so we also we do that drive uh, the rider behavior aspect and we ensure that you know he is provided suggestions on how he can improve his riding skills and if he actually does that he is rewarded so that's the that's the major offering there so starting a company always comes up with the fear of being successful at or not being at par with your goals how one should react to this situation that might worth them in the long term sure sure so i think uh, uh, like uh, it's, it's it's a very uh, you know very tricky question to answer also because at the end of the day what really uh, comes out is what is success and what is failure right the, we we sort of get down to those very basic definitions so uh, you know with my maturity or the stage i am at right now i genuinely feel it's very important to at least try i mean uh, like we we can never never be sure whether something will work out or not whether something will turn good or not we can never be sure because like those like the astrologers can claim they know that but even they don't know that i mean no one in the universe knows this only only how things will span out over time that can tell you how it was so taking the plunge is very important i think that you know you have to try if you don't try then you're not going to succeed that's for sure if you do try then there may be some chances of it and you have to be smart so for us also when we started we had zero understanding on how the ecosystem works on how a startup is run everything so it was like zero even you can say negative from where we started because to 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 top that our parents were also against it that you know why are you doing this you spend money in engineering and you know you're all of a sudden saying that you won't join a job and all of that so from there what was really important is at least you know whatever we are thinking in our head let's put it to some form and let's give it out to people let's see if they are interested or not let's see how they perceive it i think that is and if you are at least for till now what we have seen is that if you are really willing to do something you tend to find a way out in some way shape or form i think i've spoken with enough people and sort of gotten this idea from their side as well that it's often uh, you know the the plunge so yeah that's what that's what i would say so uh, i would like to pass the mic to ankit oh, yeah. for a while Uh, hey sir, Ankit here from Sardik Field. Thank you. So I just had a really nice interaction with Rashmi as we saw that you really talk talk about Alter and how it affected your career as such. So I actually have a few questions again regarding Alter. Uh, say in the current era where Alter is especially concentrating on smart helmets. So do you consider yourself to be a leader in this space, or are you actively developing to help diversify your your uh, products across many? platforms M- many ro- many products across many you know uses because i would say that uh, due to the current world where people have to uh, have a diverse portfolio would alter also have a similar kind of thing where they have many products to be put up on the market so how do you feel about what's in future for alter sure. so i think in order to answer this i would take a step back and you know, tell you as i said like i would repeat that point uh, that you know whatever Uh, the goal always is to develop more solutions to reduce accidents so that we are not thinking from that at all now having said that one product is definitely not something we are you know looking at for the long term and you know we spoke about it in the in the shark tank episode as well that we want to focus on what our core strength is which is the technology side and not necessarily you know limit ourselves to stuff which we cannot control so that the likes of a helmet so we don't manufacture the shells eventually we are of course working with you know partners and manufacturers uh, to help us in that but definitely yeah. that's the thing that's in our head that we do. because we don't control that eventually mm-hmm. you know that it won't make sense to just be that you know, a full helmet provider that even if it's a smart helmet we already are working on you know several other uh, sort of solutions which again we uh, sort of cater to the same problem but mm-hmm. of course can be accessed by different market segments right so someone who already possesses a, a very fancy helmet and that's a very big market by the way uh, you know people who have a helmet of their own they don't want to buy a new helmet altogether because people usually have sort of a connect with their helmets after you know they have gotten comfortable with it so we are also trying to bring in small uh, modules which they can clip it onto their helmet and make that a smart helmet 
that sort of opens the opens the tab significantly. Similarly, we also want to bring in a lot of software uh, you know, software solutions uh, down the line, which of course would contribute to this whole behavior change aspect as I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm not being able to share the specifics, but I can I can give you a like an overview on you know where we are heading. Definitely, we will keep innovating because the R and D is what we really believe in. And at the same time, uh, you know, in, in today's world, we genuinely believe that it's very important to be clear and to be transparent with the consumers also. So whenever we uh, sort of take this, we have a very good, uh, you know, how do I describe it? A very good a group of, you know, very enthusiastic group of people with us who are, you know, always have been the supporters of Altor. And we always try to be very clear with them, take their feedback, understand from them what's the next thing that can that can sort of add value, how it can add value, whether we can work on the on on the tech side of it and the cost and supply. That's the that's the way forward. So we will continue doing that as much as you know we have one product to start with, which is always a starting point. Definitely want to you know expand to other products in that. Yeah. Uh- just talking about this. So uh, we came, uh, I came to know that Alter, so it, Alter was started while you were in college, I believe. Uh, you right. graduated in 2018 and Alter was started in 2016. So as most of Sardic Field members are actually college and high school students. So what type of uh, suggestions would you give to anyone from college uh, about starting up? Essentially, because there are many things when it comes to starting up, so in, especially in college and high school. You have obviously one problem you have with classes, you have your own college stuff and then you are running a company. So what sort of uh, advice would you give to someone, say for example, a college student or any high school student? Because as static field is meant for college and high school students, so most of our members are in college and high school. So they're all aspiring and budding entrepreneurs. So I would like you, know, you to throw some light on this. Oh, and you know, uh, thanks for bringing this question up, Ankit, because this is definitely one of my most favorite questions to tackle. Simply because you know, I myself, as you said, said, is from an engineering background, and I very well relate with the mindset that you know students usually have back then. And for us, like what I have probably said in 2018 to what I'm saying now in 2022 is a lot different. Simply because I've had the time and the experience to do it uh, in person and you know, firsthand. So the advice would be would be very simple, and I'll be I'll be I'll be a little honest here because I'm hoping there are no professors or anything in the in this channel. So yeah, so the idea is very simple. You have to first realize what college is for, right? I think that's a question we never ask ourselves because we are never taught to ask these questions. We are always told school khatam kya, abhi college jao, college ho gaya, naukri karo, shaadi karlo, bache karlo, khatam. You are you are you know we are in this flow. Why do we need college, right? That's a very important question. Whether in in today's world, when we can learn literally everything from YouTube, from online courses, so why do we have to read the same subjects from teachers who are probably way inferior than what a YouTube lecturer would be? And at the same time, you know, it, it's not adding anything. You're simply sitting in a classroom, staring at the board, at the teacher. You're not learning anything. Your time is going away, and you are also getting mentally exhausted, right? So, I sort of realized this when, uh, like. I, again, I'd be lucky that I realized this sort of a little early back in my second year or so. I've literally st- on, like count how many days I've gone to college after second year. So, you know, that is that is definitely something. But having said that, it's very important. Okay, so first we address the question, why is college important? College is important to build your peer network. The only thing that will come out good from your college is the friends you are making, the sort of people you are interacting with. And that's where it comes to the, like, why a good name college is important because there you get the, the student quality to be that good, right? That is literally the only use case. Even the top IITs in the country, whatever they teach, how well they teach, everything can be accessed online, right? Via via material that is available. So teaching or learning is not the primary goal of college. I think it's very important to, to you know address that. So the only major use case is your peer network and sort of the relations you're building in college, right? Number one. So now with that clarity in, now say if someone wants to really do something, right? So what I usually advise people is if you haven't figured out anything or if there is no thought chain in your life, you are more, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see as it comes sort of a person, which is very okay, by the way, right? Many people are like that and that's totally fine. Then it's better for you to rather spend that 
rather not waste that time anywhere else and be in a college at least you are having a discipline in a classroom if that helps you if it doesn't and if you have some idea on what you want to do what are your interests as in you know what are the things that that excite you because i genuinely think as a college kid in india the sort of most of us are from middle class backgrounds where it's it's very you know we, it's it's a very typical setup where uh, these things never come up so if that person or that kid still has been able to you know have some idea especially because that kid is more exposed to the world now and he or she sees how entrepreneurship works how how startups are coming up what they're doing if they have any idea please start working on that from as early as you can so that is super important that if if that's coming to you like i meet uh, college kids from first year who have great clarity you know that i i don't want any of the other things i just want to focus on this and that is brilliant if you have that sort of a focus what you really need to do is just keep working because college time is also the most amount of time you will get sort of as a free time right especially i'm talking about engineering colleges in fourth year yeah, i mention it free time because very honestly 95% cases you can pretty decent in the exam just by studying a week before that you don't need to spend more time there so what's really important at least for our college or in 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 kolkata the private colleges that are there they, you know there that was the most requirement that a student had to put in in order to be to decent in the exams now then that leaves you with a lot of time before that where you can actually work on whatever is your skill whatever is something that you want to sharpen and then what it comes is build a leverage so say someone wants to has figured out a, a uh, you know some topic which he or she wants to communicate in youtube or establish a youtube channel right where then just make sure that over those next 2 years 3 years you are building a sufficient leverage so that that becomes your your learning process right down the line because eventually i think it's very important for all of us to realize is after you're out of college for most middle class families you will have to figure out a way to earn that is super crucial i am assuming most of us won't be able to go back to our parents and say uh, dad uh, give me 15 lakhs more i want to do this that would not be an option right so it's very important that you start earning now so why do people often get into these you know sort of uh, shitty jobs after college because you have to have that desperation that otherwise where will i earn from where will i get the money from and every it professional every you know people you know have a word with them you'll realize that's the only reason why they are working that they are getting a salary at the end of the month they don't have any love for the job they don't have any you know, sort of uh, uh, yeah love and liking for what they're doing so figuring out how you earn how you will earn money or how you want to want to earn money is very important so this this i'm saying of course for people who are you know who have the clarity early on first year second year then that gives you a good enough time to build your leverage in those college years and make sure that once you are graduating out of college you are at least one step in to whatever you want to do that can be a startup that can be a product idea that can be a youtube channel anything it can simply be you know teaching right so you you have a very good skill and you have figured out a way to teach that it can be all of that now considering someone doesn't have that sort of a clarity and you know they get into a job maybe a very basic whatever some job where they just have to get the money at the end of the month and they are not enjoying if that is also the case a little difficult but still not impossible you will have to start immediately if that's when you get the realization that yeah this is not a job i want to continue for the rest of my life but definitely for the next 2 years i can manage to continue doing this where i'm getting a salary at the end of the month and i can dedicate time to separately work on the thing that i did that becomes difficult let's let's be very clear about that it's not very easy because after you come back from work you tend to go to sleep relax you know open up uh one hour of youtube content and just immerse in that but it's really really important to then take that plunge and make sure you are walking now the last advice would be never never sort of take anything that will you know uh ensure that you don't have money to pay your bills the next month right so one thing that definitely people advise a lot is leave everything and start the startup no absolutely not the ideal scenario is that you take a full time plunge once you are sure enough about what you are doing before that continue doing that with whatever job you have 
if it's in a job state or with your college curricula if you're in a college. Yeah, that would be from my side. Yeah, uh, that was that was very relatable. Me being a so for more at my college, I could relate that really well. I'm sure, I'm sure, sure you would. Because that's what that's what I really love, right? Because most students feel this way. It's not very different. It's just that you know, because these conversations don't happen, we often don't know what to address. Uh, yeah. So on that. So uh, now I would like one share from static field again to continue the talk. Once you can come. Okay. So hi, sir. Um, I like the answers very much. The, the way you described them, and I like like the, how you express your journey. And and uh, I'm also a student of the. Hello. 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 Uh, can you hear me? Is it just me or the others also are having? Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah, he is audible now. I think you can connect. Can you hear me? Oh, somehow not being. Like I can hear the background noises probably from your screen. What you're saying. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So, hi, sir. And I love the answers that you said that. And I even I I want to be a student entrepreneur, so I can relate to it very much. Actually, I had a very 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 pinching question. So yeah. So I wanted to ask that. Uh, yeah, that there the, you, that you described the sharpen that you have to sail through the death of your friend. So how did you convert that pain into an idea? And then you are working it. Then you took it to, to shark tank. And but on you went through for that process. And like it's a very inspiring thing to think of that your friend died, and then you eventually take it to a level, and then. Uh, after some time, if it, if it becomes a big industry, if it becomes a big business, you, people will remember the business with that name. So you're taking that name forward. So I wanted to ask about that. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, I think, of course, like that's the thought channel, right? But having said that, a thought is not enough. So what is really important is how we are following that up with actions. And there, I think, uh, you know, the, as a first step, I got lucky to get in touch with a few really good people who who sort of had the had the similar sort of a will. So that's the first step, right? I think it, it also tells you uh, how the, you know, the, the journey is. So for, for us, that was the point when I first got to understand that, yeah, I will be needing co-founders and these are the sort of profile of co-founders uh, I would need, right? So maybe the word co-founder honestly was not there in my head back, back at that time because again, as I said, I was not into the ecosystem at all and had never been a part of it so the idea was who would work with me what are the complementary skill sets i need so once that was sorted then we could uh, you know uh, put up the first prototype in place which was again like if you, if you look back that's you know you will always cringe at the work you have done uh, you know your first right but yeah it's the truth that that was the first time where we were literally Hello. sticking everything on the outside of a, a helmet with cello tapes and everything and we somehow Where got a thing assembled and you know engineering students would realize we were using arduino boards back Haan, then which like the, the, the down, go to thing for every ec and you know electronics uh, project in college Pata so we nahin. somehow Pata assembled nahin. that we yeah. made sure that it's functioning and then the first thing we tried to do is without realizing nahin, that nahin. it's important that nahin. much nahin. back nahin. then. We, because nahin. you know, it's always said that nahin. once you have an idea or anything, nahin. make sure you spend the rest of the entire time, a good amount of time nahin. in validating, nahin. asking prospective customers whether they need it, how much nahin. they'll pay for it and so on. So we actually did that nahin. kind of accidentally in the sense, nahin. not nahin. as a validation nahin. because again, we didn't nahin. know about validation, but what we like realized is okay we have made this now who will use this let's give it to them and let's see whether they are whether they like it or not 
that's how uh, we, it it really you know that helped us in getting a lot of clarity as to what the users yeah, wanted the, what sort the, of stuff you know they were comfortable with paying and we used mm-hmm. to be stopping bikers at random you know outside of our college uh mm-hmm. bunking classes and just you know trying to figure out that what what can Kya be bata? done there what sort of feedback are Haan, we getting and we we really spent a good amount Kana of time fam, fam, tha, fam, you know, going currently we, we did this for about a month at a stretch and there we got Are a very good uh, you know data set as to who are the initial people who needed oh, no, this I uh, what sort Sunday of price they were willing to pay for it and then we sort of started uh, right so no so once this validation was done na, i think yeah, it was then only that we got selected for a very prestigious competition one, which was the india innovation challenge i think it was organized by texas institute of technology ya to passport ya to driving license ya to so we went there of course like a normal as most of you would do right we we often tend to do this Nein. a lot in college ki chalo bhar ke dekhte hain form kya hoga dekha jayega so we we did the same and that sort of thing we were kaam kar rahe hain aur in the finals kagal ban raha hai so we realized that okay this is something serious people are not laughing at it but actually taking it seriously and the people are willing to even uh, even telling us okay how much should we pay for it and stuff and back then uh, it was the major decision making time that once we were in the final we had to be incubated for which we had to leave college and go to a separate mm-hmm. city and stay and work on this dedicatedly now as much as we were thrilled at the prospects our parents were not voter id is pretty come. understandable that you know uh, to convince them that we won't even complete the degree so our college director literally got on calls with my dad and the other co-founders fathers and mm-hmm. he tried to explain to them how this is a very good idea and there won't be any problem but our parents were like clear help no it's not not going to happen you are continuing with the degree we realize that that's not a fight we want to do at this point of time we understand you have to understand your parents side also that is something i think in our generation we often don't do that they have a reason for these fears they have a reason and you you owe something to them for sure like for all the trouble they have taken up and the stuff they are doing so with that they uh, they really press that you cannot do this without completing the degree we realized we will not continue with it now but carry on with the background research and once we complete our degree we will take this up full time that is sort of that next one year we worked really on fine tuning the prototype and making sure that you know many things come to place and by the time we graduated we had something little more concrete which is more presentable and yeah that's how that's how sort of it, it started that's a very precise answer and like the details sorry i i said to say and i left the answer I also i wanted to ask that your product is like hardware based so and you have a hardware and you have a software so software can be copied a hardware cannot be copied so you have there will it will take a lot of time for someone to copy your idea and like to fill a competition against you and you can counter that with the funds that you gain and with the expertise that you gain from shark tank so i wanted to ask that will you be uh, working on the hardware side of your product or will you be working on the software side of the product because building a software is very easy you can just hire developers but by building a hardware you will have to spend a lot of money and hard work in uh, r and d and all so i i would i would i would take this question up a little differently once if you allow so i think it's more of uh, like at this point again being in this thing first hand for a while i can safely conclude that technically in the universe nothing is you know nothing is very difficult to copy if you have enough money if you have enough muscle power to sort of pour in everything is doable so that's not the way we think very honestly uh, what is important is if you are building something are people connecting with you are people really liking what you are doing and as a modern day brand you cannot just be limited to a product right you have to there are many things you have to think there are many uh, sort of you know connects that that you have to put in in order to just give me a sec yeah there are many sort of uh, moving parts you have to put together so what we really want to do is establish a brand that is very important i think that's what cannot be copied right so like everything else save tomorrow someone gives you a soap uh, exactly same looking as a lux soap you would still choose a lux soap why because that's the name that's in your head it's a brand you have uh, lux equal to trust sort of an equation in your mind whereas the same looking soap that's next to it would not have that that is sort of where we are uh, you know looking to work on 
and rather than you know restricting uh, the thoughts to just which is easier to copy and which is not because uh, once once anything go, goes big enough and you know it's lucrative enough everything is copyable definitely like we feel the same uh, for anything but at the same time what cannot be copied is the perception in the user's head as to whether this is good whether this brand is something that i want to put my trust on whether this name the altor is something that is you know ringing a bell in my head now I, to to extend this point uh, chinese uh, bluetooth devices is and you know the the basic stuff has been around for a while it's not that you know it hasn't been at all but why hasn't this whole sector grown in as a as as sort of something uh, exciting or really big because of the lack of a brand because people uh, as much as we can we can trust the phones the hardware which are still made in china but the brand is somewhere else like like every apple macbook is ultimately made in china it's just designed in apple was because of the apple logo that name we are having more confidence on that device but the moment it's an unbranded chinese product it's very different it's a, it's a very different response all around so similarly so for us i think the goal is to establish the brand make sure that the brand is something that people recognize us with thereby i think then the other sets would fall into place in the sense that you know even if someone brings a rip off it wouldn't be an altor product and that's what should play in the mind of the consumer definitely agree sir uh, you you talked about brand building so i would like to ask how how do you build a brand and uh, second 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 follow up question would be like how is shark tank helping you in building a brand great question great question so i would i would first address the elephant in the room which is the shark tank help for sure <laughs> as much as you know we love we love the people we love the sharks we are very close to them like we are very like often in touch i at least i believe in uh, clarity for ourselves as well as for everyone in the team and we have had this clarity very well with them that it's at the end our business it's at the end our work we have to take the steps we have to do the work and no one will do the work for us we have this clarity uh, really really well with us that you know though they are investors they are extremely respectable people in the society but they have their own businesses to run and we cannot sort of uh, expect them to do our work and that's why i have made it very clear also with with the team with the investors everyone that they are advisors when we seek for an advice when there is a place because they are both as i said very well connected in the industry very well experienced but it's not their company that is very important to understand and realize it's the company of the founders of the team that's working here and here the management team has to take calls and we do ask for advices from them every time there is something we need Uh, you know somewhere we feel that they have a previous experience in this or something we seek for advice and we have you know gotten great help support in that regard but uh, yeah for the gen- general work we have the clarity that we are the ones who will be doing it and now to come to tackle your question of the brand building so it's it's a very it's a very good question so because there is something that's very you know uh, it, it's more of a jargon these days that you know this is a brand there is a brand building and you often have those marketing gurus bringing up lectures on on youtube on how to how to bring up uh, how to build a brand but what i really believe is uh, you know with this idea that marketing of course it has certain rule books but there are no defined you know that you have to do this to build a brand no what is important is that your consumers especially the first target base of people who are using your product or anything they should be very happy with the product that's the first step of a brand building right where you know you sort of have uh, those uh, how do i call it the core supporters with you right who will always be with you as you bring your next product sharing your views and everything and once that core group is uh, you know sort of taken care of that core group in itself will like uh, take efforts to spread the word out to other people they know right so one very interesting thing about human psychology is and this i learned from one of the i think one of the sessions of kunal shah the founder of cred and free charge that humans humans and every human work in this psychology so like uh, kunal shah has asked this uh, question very famously that can you name anything any product any service which was more efficient 20 years back and less efficient now the answer is nothing we cannot we won't be able to think of anything 
that has sort of gone into an efficiency reduction timeline that never happens so any product or any any service it always tries to increase the efficiency right and humans as a general being it has this psychology that whenever it finds something that is really you know making things efficient humans cannot stop themselves from sharing it with others from sharing it with the people they know from sharing it with the people they love their network and everything and that is the best first step for a brand building which is often termed as word of mouth right and any any other thing you can all of course pump in a lot of money in ads or you know uh, in 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 creating events in creating sort of the, this brand persona with with a lot of money but that will never be sustainable never so any time and every time any platform gets used to sucking money from you be it facebook be it instagram be it youtube be it google you will never be able to convince that platform to give you any help without the money it's a very it's a very common psyche right if you think of a a friend a person you know if from the first day you establish this relationship ki boss you are my friend please do the work i'll give you 1000 bucks do you think that person will ever in the second time do the work free for you the answer is no because that expectation has been set like that so that will keep keep you know burning money from your side so ensuring that you get word of mouth ensuring that your core customers are happy they are so happy that they want to share it with their friends that i think is the first step to a brand i yes, said that was a very detailed detailed answer and i guess rashmi would like to conclude because the session is about to I uh, come to an end. Uh, I had a lot of questions in my mind, but uh, since the time is over, so I can't do anything about it. Miss Ashwi, you can go. Fine. So, um, is there any advice that you would like to give to the young mind? Well, actually, just like, one last um, question before uh, Rashmi can start winding up. So, I believe uh, uh, you are a hardware company. So, uh, so in hardware companies, I believe there is a quite a few dilemmas in manufacturing products so in this in this time of the pandemic when everything people are not tending to work on site they tending to work off site mean my from work from home and all these things so how are you managing the dilemma of you know managing all these teams within the company so what sort of activities what sort of challenges are you facing while running a company and i believe in the pandemic that must have been quite a challenge to uh, keep up with the uh, with the rate of uh, uh, consumer with the rate of the demand and your supply so what challenges do you face of course of course and i think it's a it's an ongoing process so i would not be able to tell you you know that these these are abc the steps that one should take we are learning it ourselves on the go but definitely i think the core core of all of this comes from the fact that everyone in the team should feel connected that is very important because at the moment there are a bunch of people who are you know working for a common goal it's again a, a part of human psyche that we often tend to lose focus in in short sprints right and then again we sort of uh, get bored with something and then we we again think okay let's get back so those are the critical moments where as a management team or you know as sort of the leadership team you have to come in and you have to make sure that they can they can survive those those short sprints of you know less focus because when someone is like anyone who wants to join a gym for the first 20 days he would be super motivated then the next the 21st day onwards you know the motivation starts to go down slightly and by the time you are on the 80th day you have stopped altogether you have you have also already explained it in your head that the membership was a waste let's just let's just scrap it off doesn't matter i'll have two more rounds of chole bhature whatever but then that in your head is already gone so why has it been gone because you have lost the motivation in the middle if somehow you could continue it for 80 days the rest 20 day would not be a challenge because then your mind will tell you okay i'll have i have it you know done for such a long time might as well finish it off but it's this middle period which we are also trying as a management team to have weekly calls and you know like as much as you can just feel connected with the team understand what their problems are because in in this whole pandemic cycle i think many of us have faced many sort of mental issues as well when i talk about mental issues it's not that you know the 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 very imminent and evident ones that indian indian society or our parents think but the more subtle and nuanced uh, things like you know depression lack of being able to meet other people or you know having to having to deal with the loneliness those stuff 
we are definitely focusing on conversation and down the line we want to definitely take up even further bits of activities to make sure that the team gels well together and there is a coherence that's that's the whole whole and soul goal that uh, focus the you know the common points of interest should never go away at the same time people should never stop having fun that is the most important thing so you know when we converse when we speak we always try to make sure that the discussions are not just heavy 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 at the same time there are some fun elements to it which people because we often look forward to the things which are fun right that's the most human psyche so it's very important to make meetings fun to make conversations fun so that there is a look forward to quotient for the other people So, is there some advice that you would like to give uh, or deliver on this platform to the young student entrepreneurs or existing or maybe upcoming? Ashmi, I'm really sorry, I lost you. Could you just come again? Oh, oh. Issue. So, uh, like, no, I was no. asking whether is there any advice that you I would like to deliver Rashmi, on this can't platform? Hear you actually. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Hey, Rashmi, I think he can't hear you. I guess her connection just dropped by. Yeah, so sir, uh, since this event is about to end, and there there will be like our last question from us that we would like to conclude by. So we would love to have your advice on. us like how what advice would you like to give the student entrepreneurs sure sure i think i think we we tackled this question to to some degree i think from a previous question that ankit had asked right i think those would be my my core key advices like if i have to repeat that in a very summarized form it would be number one identify what you like doing and when you identify what you like doing it's sort of the concept of ikigai right Ik- ikigai is a japanese concept i would request every student if they can just look up the word it's i k i g a i ikigai that simple so ikigai is an intersection if you remember venn diagrams and set theory that you studied in your school days you can imagine three circles inter- intersecting at a common point the three circles are what you want to do in life what will fetch you money and you know what will sort of be something that you i'm forgetting the third one i think it's something that you can continuously put your effort in and the intersection of those three is what you ideally should be doing in life and we all have different ikki guys uh, you know uh, so that's what we need to identify as a student it's not easy it's not easy given the uh, the the upbringing that most of us have had where it's a very you know it's a very constricted upbringing in the sense that these conversations never come up as i said in the in the households but again having said that we are a lucky generation that now we have the internet every information is accessible so try to find out what you want to do that's i think spend the most amount of time in that if you are a college kid that's definitely something you should spend do do enjoy your time do hang out with friends do make very good and beautiful relationships because those are the ones that will stay down the line right so even your school friends would go go away but your college friends if you can make a very strong and good group that's a lifetime asset for you so do invest time in that in spending or you know uh, hanging out with your friends and at the same time give time to what you want to do once you find that out if there is any remotest clue you get maybe you narrow down on two or three things that you are good at try all of them out do not be in this thought okay in my head i have become mukesh ambani no you have to get the ground works you know laid you have to take the first steps and the moment you take the first steps you would realize the difficulties that would also give you some idea on you know how you want to go forward And the moment that is done, say out of those three things you have been able to figure out which one you want to do, really spend a good amount of time in that. Like good amount of time, when I say I genuinely mean that should occupy the most hours in a week that you are putting. And if you can consistently do that for a good one year, one and a half, two years, I'm fairly confident that the person would build a sufficient leverage, wherein you know they can simply uh, sort of then take this up as their career and. then then the, the transition from the college to the rest of the rest of the life journey that whole uh, jump that one has to take that becomes very smooth then and you have a clarity and a direction 
so that was really insightful and yes sorry like, one last uh, point that is to try and uh, try and minimize your time to useless class attending in class i mean in, in college and you know useless lectures that is not adding anything to your life if you are clear if you are clear about that and try to find out some way like uh, i often tell this to people even at the risk of uh, probably not not sounding very politically correct but yeah i think genuinely this is a bottleneck because people students don't understand that staring at the board staring at the teacher's face won't take you anywhere in life you have to take the steps on your own and if you think that that is causing a uh, time loss for you do think on how you can avoid that often i have seen for in my case our hod head of the department i had a very good relationship with him and when i actually convinced him that this is what we are doing we have something tangible even they would understand right it's all how you are dealing with people in terms of communication and these should be very good lessons for you to then go out into the world and talk to your investors talk to your clients and convince them so yeah that would be i think this was the most important piece of advice so um like see, Rashi, we are high I'm still not being able to hear i'm so sorry no issues with that okay i, uh, I can continue on rashmi we also sir that was really great like valuable points which we would be like we'll be like pe- penning it down and we'll definitely consider all the thing which you really advised us so coming to an end uh, it was really great to have you today with us and seeing your generosity you uh, like you gave your time to us and help us in the entrepreneurial journey which we would like to pursue also so we would l- request you to be here with us and be connected with us after this event also and in future we'll have we'll love to have you again so thanks again for joining sir sure sure it was a pleasure and you know i always enjoy uh, if it's usually like for me the 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 hierarchy is very clear i enjoy the you know the the, the corporate sessions the least but definitely i enjoy sessions with the students the most because that's where you know there's this relatability factor and there's sort of the idea which i can connect better also so definitely it was a very fun session for me thank you thank you for having me It was a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Great. All right then. Thank you. Let's stay connected. And yeah, it was it was super fun. Thanks, guys. And I loved your last answer. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, uh, budge in and say that. <laughs> you can discuss it. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Same. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'll I'll take leave now. Great. Let Let's catch up soon again. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye bye.